Good day, everyone. I'm Cyrus Webb, and welcome to Conversation Daddy News. Glad you all could be with us. Of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Tuesday. I have a message from my book, Word That Choose to Live By. And in today's news, you can use yesterday, I had an interesting conversation on Conversations Live, the radio show, with Lucas Shriam of GoDaddy, talking about generative AI and how it can help small businesses save time and money. I know this can be a tricky topic for a lot of people, but I think you'll really enjoy this segment, so stay tuned for that. Enjoy our broadcast. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Summers Webb with your Tuesday headlines. In national news, Biden and Trump are making dueling trips to the Mexico border in Texas on Thursday, the Associated Press is reporting. President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump will make dueling trips to the Mexican border in Texas on Thursday after congressional talks on a deal to rein in illegal migration collapsed. The visits underscore immigration's central importance in the 2024 presidential race and how much Biden and Trump are seeking to use the nation's broken system to their political advantage. Biden will travel to Brownsville, Texas in the Rio Grande Valley, an area that often sees large numbers of border crossings, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said on Monday. He will meet with border agents and discuss the need for bipartisan legislation. It will be his second visit to the border as president. He visited El Paso in January of last year. He wants to make sure he puts his message out there to the American people, Jean-Pierre said. Trump, for his part, will head to Eagle Pass, Texas, about 325 miles away from Brownsville, another hot spot in the state federal clash over border security, according to three people who spoke to the Associated Press on condition of anonymity. The number of people who are illegally crossing the U.S. border has been rising for complicated reasons that include climate change, war, and unrest in other nations, the economy, and cartels that see migration as a cash cow. The administration has been pairing crackdowns at the border with increasing legal pathways for migrants designed to steer people into arriving by plane with sponsors not illegally on foot to the border. But U.S. policy right now allows for migrants to claim asylum regardless of how they arrive, and the number of migrants flowing to the U.S.-Mexico border have far outpaced the capacity of an immigration system that has not been substantially updated in decades. Arrests for illegal crossings fell by half in January, but there were record highs in December, says the Associated Press. Biden has excoriated Republicans for abandoning the bipartisan border deal after Trump came out in opposition to the plan to tighten asylum restrictions and create daily limits on border crossings. Trump, meanwhile, has dialed up his anti-migrant rhetoric, suggesting migrants are poisoning the blood of Americans. Trump's campaign says Biden's plan to visit the border is a sign that the president is on the defensive over immigration and the issue is a problem for his re-election effort. Trump's campaign press secretary said Biden was chasing Trump and is responsible for the worst immigration crisis in history. The White House announcement came after Trump's planned trip had been reported. In more national news, AT&T will give $5 to customers hit by cell phone network outage, says the Associated Press. AT&T says it will give affected customers $5 each to compensate for last week's cell phone network outage that left many without service for hours. The Dallas-based company said on its website the customers will get the $5 credit on their account within two billing cycles. The credit does not apply to AT&T business, prepaid service, or cricket, its low-cost service providers. AT&T said prepaid customers will have options available to them if they were impacted, although it did not elaborate on what these options might be. The outage knocked out cell phone service for thousands of its users across the U.S., starting early Thursday before it was restored. In more national news, U.S. sues to block merger of grocery giants Kroger and Albertsons, saying it could push prices higher. The Federal Trade Commission sued to block a proposed merger between grocery giants Kroger and Albertsons, saying the $25 billion deal would eliminate competition and lead to higher prices for millions of Americans. The FTC filed an administrative complaint against the companies on Monday, which will be considered by an administrative law judge at the agency. It also filed a lawsuit with the U.S. District Court in Oregon requesting a temporary injunction blocking the merger. That lawsuit was joined by the attorneys general of eight states and the District of Columbia. In more national news, Kenneth Mitchell, known for Star Trek and Captain Marvel roles, dies at age 49. Kenneth Mitchell, a Canadian actor known for his roles in the series Star Trek Discovery and the film Captain Marvel, has died. He had lived with a disorder called ALS, which causes paralysis and death for more than five years, according to a statement from Mr. Mitchell's family posted on his social media. In Captain Marvel, he played the father of the superhero, Carol Danvers. 
He was also known for betraying Eric Green on the series Jericho, Joshua Dodd in the series Nancy Drew, a hockey player in the film Miracle, and appeared in several other films and television series. And finally, in entertainment news, Oppenheimer keeps devouring awards with top prize at Producers Guild with Oscars up next as the Associated Press. With two weeks to go before the Oscars, Oppenheimer looks unstoppable. Director and producer Christopher Nolan's tale of the life of J. Robert Oppenheimer and the birth of the Atomic Age won the top prize Sunday at the 35th Producers Guild of American Awards, a frequent predictor of Oscar Best Picture winners the night after doing the same at the Screen Actor Guild Awards. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's on time for a message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By. Enjoy. Good Tuesday, everyone, and welcome to Words That Choose to Live By. Failure is not an option. There is nothing shameful about stumbling on your journey in life. The only disgrace would be in not getting up, dusting yourself off, and continuing forward. The difficulty should only strengthen your resolve that there is something greater for you right around the corner, so let's get about getting to it. Have an amazing Tuesday. We are part of my conversation coming up with Luka Shriam of GoDaddy in today's news you can use. Stay with us you're listening to Conversation Daddy News. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your news you can use. Luka Shriham of GoDaddy joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about how generative AI can help small businesses is a bit of our conversation. Luka, thank you again for the time. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Cyrus. Thank you for having me. Well, look, this is an important conversation for us, Luka, because there's a lot of lot of dialogue out there right now about about AI, and of course, some people are excited about it and the possibilities. Others, though, not so much. So there is some reluctance. But what is generative AI? That may be a new term for our audience. And how can people use it in their day to day lives? Yeah, uh, generative AI is, is a relatively new and fast evolving technology that's capable of generating text, images, and other assets or data. It, it uses language models and AI in response to user in, user prompts, or which is like a simple input in the form of plain English. You're right, there are risks associated with it, especially at the beginning of the curve, which is probably like two years back. And with the rapid, the way the technology has been evolving, the risks have been significantly going down, and the benefits and the advantage of actually using it has skyrocketed. So to your first point where you mentioned that only 26% of small and micro business owners are currently using AI. And that's a number that's gone up over the past year. Last year that number was 11% and now it's gone up to 26%. There is still a, a huge way to go up for this. Are, are small business owners that are not using AI, are they then missing out when it comes to their business? 100%. I strongly believe that AI right now has evolved to a state where it can, it should be used as both a personal assistant or a business assistant in multiple aspects of, of a small business owner. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News. We better get to own tomorrow's more news. Message from my book, Words That Choose to Live By, and of course, your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daddy News today. Let us go make today amazing. Take care.